Keep talking, Tucker. <laughs> Tucker's telling us why he's never smiling in videos. But look, he's smiling right now. <laughs> Broken bolts or breaking off. <coughs> off broken bolts. Well test. Ooh, past that one. Well test. Yeah. Got it. That's, That's what happens when you like, burn like when you I don't even know anymore. So those were broken off flush, kinda like this one is over here. Like you guys can see that there. I think more, it was more afraid of the earthquake than it was. Alright, so I'll try to explain what we're doing. We sold this John Deere 755K track loader to a customer. Um, and he wants rock guards on. I think he's out on the west coast or somewhere. What the rock guards do, they protect big rocks from rolling in here and getting caught in these rollers. You guys look at this little 450 over here. It has rock guards on it. Um, it was a good and bad situation. Around here, a lot of guys take them off. The reason is a lot of dirt and stuff in the wintertime can get packed up in here. Gravel, like 53 type gravel, like this stuff here with the lime dust in it. It will get packed up in there in mud or what have you, and then that will freeze up and lock all those rollers up solid in the wintertime. So a lot of guys in our neck of the woods will take those off. Um, I don't know where he's working this machine. He may be working a lot of rock and stuff like that. Like I say, that's about the only situation. That's why they call them rock guards. It's more for the big chunks of rocks from getting in there, so. Alright, so I was going to show you guys the inside of this. I don't know if you guys watched the last video. I had one of these 755Ks before, but I had a little bit different steering setup. This is what the uh, Caterpillar setup, so I call a cat setup. It has a V for the forward and backwards here. We have pedals for the steering, and a standard joystick control. Now the other one I had, um, had joystick steering like the dozers on it, so. I think those are a little bit better, but you can order these both ways. The reason is Cat, Cat came up with this design way back when, so a lot of the guys are used to running, so that's why they make it that way. But uh, we're going to get her pulled in the shop here and start working on it. So we're down here in the pit. It makes it a lot easier to do some of this. We've got to uh, get these holes all tapped out. I'm going to make some work on that. These are all threaded. We have 16 millimeter holes. So I didn't get a tap. Clean all those out and we'll go modify some uh, brackets. Alright, I got one, two, three, four, five, six roller holes. We got one, two, three, four, five rollers, so we gotta cut one out. Man, that painter missed a couple spots. Well, I'll paint anything. We're gonna get some measurements here. Look at you looking at your paint job. I'll even paint oil. Um, we're going to get some measurements and see if it's exactly one roller or less. Well, my uh, plan did not work out too well. So, uh, apparently the dozer spacing, the roller spacing is one inch narrower on the rollers I don't. I don't know why they got to make stuff different. So these right here are one inch shorter on this dozer rail. Isn't that right? Yeah. We got to be one inch wider. Apparently the space to roller is different. I don't know why they can't make things simple. <laughs> huh. 
So, Mr. Tucker, I guess you're going to run a plasma cutter unless we're going to spend like $2,500 a piece from John Deere, which I can't do that, so. Look at you thinking. I don't know how this what you're even thinking here. I'm confused. I'll help you draw it up and we'll get her going. One thing. All our hands in. Team on three. Team on three. You're going to be welding for days is all I can say. Alright, so yesterday Tucker and I got one of these uh, side plates drawn up here. We took a bunch of measure measurements you guys can see here. Um, I'm going to cut this out of a piece of 16 gauge thin metal here first because we could have some holes or something off. There's a lot of stuff going on there. We did cut uh, one of these brackets out. i got to do a couple modifications to that. So a little bit of tweaking here and there and uh, hopefully get it. So I'm going to cut this out. We'll see how close it is and if it fits. If it does, and then we'll transfer it to a big sheet of uh, three quarter inch way up there and uh, buzz it out. I don't want to waste three quarter inch steel as I've said many times. It's not cheap right now. So I hit the run button here. We're going to cut the holes out first and we'll cut the outline. And turn it for tight control. up under the tractor I think everything's gonna fit real well the way it looks so I got our holes up there but, uh, I'm gonna trim a little bit off the top up here make sure that's all right so we got a little bit of weld sticking up I don't want to hit that with the big piece so I think we'll modify that and we'll be good to cut that out some thicker steel Got our little side brackets and all those things cut out. We got a big old sheet of three quarter inch steel up here next. We're gonna cut it out. I know I've said in the past that sheet of steel people always ask was around nine hundred and some dollars US here recently, so it's not cheap. So we got my side plates all laid in here. I got a couple flip flopped, um, so we're not wasting as much steel. So got that drawn up sheet cam. We're gonna open up the uh, fast cut software here and load that in there and then see how she does cutting three quarters I did last time we cut some three quarters adjust some uh, parameters on the uh, uh, torch delay and that kind of stuff so we should be cutting a little bit better here so I'm gonna get set up and we'll let her rip CNC worked flawlessly cutting this three quarter out. It took about seven minutes for each part there. A lot of people are asking why I run water in the table. This is one of the reasons why it keeps this thing cool. Um, you get a lot of heat in a big sheet like that and stuff will start warping and bending. And the uh, blue stuff we dumped in had people asking is actually a just a coolant additive to keep stuff from resting. So Tucker's here from school today, aren't you? Yeah. You ready to start bending and doing lots of welding for the rest of your life? That's a lot of welding, that's a lot of welding, that's a lot of welding. That's a lot of welding. That's a lot of welding. I just hope it all fits. All right, we're gonna get set up here and start bending some pieces. Just 
check one. Alright, so I can only bend one side of this. The other side, you guys seen there in that last clip, was coming up around and hitting. So, what we done, uh, we actually cut a notch. We just left the two ears there so we can put this in the vise. We started to bend and bend it as far as we could, but then we'll just put it in the vise and tap that over until it matches this radius right here, basically. Just that simple. If we had some different dies and stuff like that, we could probably make it work, but we'll be fine for this operation. And once he bends that over, we'll just weld that little gap on the back side. It'll be tight on the inside, and it'll be just fine. So this is basically a bolt protector more than anything else. So. All right, you ready, bud? All right, got all of our pieces bent. These are gonna be these things right here. So what we're gonna do, since we're kinda of just building these one off, if we was building these in production, we would uh, take one of these, set it up, tack it up on the machine, and then build a jig to match it. So being we probably won't be making any of these again, I hope not at least anyway. We're just gonna uh, tack all these up on the machine. We'll put the long bars in there. We'll show you guys that here in a second. And we're just gonna tack all these individual pieces. We'll bolt each one of these up make sure they all fit and uh, then he can pull them out and fully weld them. I think we can put these on after the fact after we get those set. So. No, I just tack it with the 035 for right now. And then you can scoot up the 045 dual shield if you want. So, Alright, we're going to get everything set up over there and we'll bring you guys back. Our friend Kevin came to help us. We need lots of help. Hello. Can you carry that big heavy thing? He's big and strong. Lucky for you, I'm swole. You tell Tucker thanks for helping. Thank you, Tucker. Where's all the bolts and all that? Bolts. It's like a little blocky. To hold the duppy? To hold the duppy. Uh, you ready to go? Sure. Is that 15 16 wrench sitting there? Oh, this one must be one of those good Lawson bolts, Kevin. Oh, yeah. She's strong. I got it. Good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got it. We got a crappy bolt. Oh, I'm not up where I need to be. Are you up where you need to be? I'm alive. I got my side. <laughs> Can't you get her? Oh, it's that way. Keep talking, Tucker. <laughs> Tucker's telling us why he's never smiling in videos. But look, he's smiling right now. Because <laughs> he makes me mad and he puts a camera on my face. It's okay. Tucker's always happy. Yeah. That's just how Tucker yeah. shows his love. Yeah, definitely. Okay, Tacker Tucker. Somebody called you that. Tacker Tucker. I think we've got it. It almost looks like we knew what we were doing. No. We just got to do it three, 
four times. You guys can set it all up, and I'm gonna go well on pieces. <laughs> Who's playing the music? Mason? Is that you? Mason's not here. So you guys are probably gonna ask in the comments, why are these looped up like this? So we hey, got why a, are those looped up like that? We got a roller here and a roller here. If you run over a big rock, this uh, here rail can pad can. Oh. If we lift that straight, it could hit. When you're really off road in your 755k track loader, you know. Oh, All right, so hopefully you guys can kind of see what we got going on here. It's gonna look factory once Kevin paints it. Uh, black. Black. Yellow bud. No. You're gonna have to do not too good of a job on the inside one so it matches. That matches the rest of your paint job? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fine. All right, Tacker Tucker, let's get to tacking. Don't mind the ferocity of those in Got some wind blowing. Smile, you're on camera. Got it. We ready to take this off? Alright. Hang on, let's get some more done to that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is never tapped out in the correct angle. <laughs> Nailed it. Last one, folks. Oh, I need a load. <laughs> what? Oh, you can be in our video, Uncle Scott. We're just talking about how we're going to buy a boat in Hawaii because I just bought a bulldozer in Hawaii. You want to try that up? Uh, yeah, hold on, Gap Master 2000. Oh, he's all right, probably. Seriously, bro. He even left. Yes. Oh, there she is, all tacked together. We just got to put uh, Tucker, Tacker, Tucker's got to put these on here like this and do a lot of welding. Then she'll be all done. Ready for the master painter. Grinder. Hey, bud, you run out of water. Fresh out. Fresh out. Got ready to set the time lapse up and she ran out. So, we had a company reach out to us a couple months ago. National Standard. I'd never heard of them before, have you? Mm -mm. They're out of Oklahoma. They've been making wires since like early 1900s, like 1906 or something. I'd have to look up the information here, but they reached out to us. There's their information. Uh, they sent us a roll. I was supposed to get a roll of 035 um, solid wire. Looks like he sent us 045, so we're going to try it. I also have a thing of 71 series 045 dual shield. Um, this is not really what we're going to require that so we're going to stick this in here and see how it welds so but uh at least it's american made that's what matters so so we're practicing this new wire and that's looking pretty slick tucker well, actually i'm, I'm not gonna, he's liking it i'm not gonna he's probably smiling under that helmet right now I wonder if I can get a smile vision. Are you smiling under your helmet? I got some ferocity. Do we have a video? Yeah. Oh, we won't show that on TV. I'll edit this part of the video out. <laughs> I don't know. That's pretty slick. Keep trying.
All right, how'd you do painting? Oh, I nailed it. Nailed it. They look good. Yeah, in the rain. If uh, you didn't tell nobody, they wouldn't know if these didn't come from John Deere. Okay. Say it rained on you? Yeah. I'll stay way back. They look good. They're plenty good enough. Kevin did an awesome job painting. Tucker did an awesome job welding. That uh, plasma cutter impressed me. I mean, you can't. We did not take a grinder to those edges or nothing. Pretty slick, aren't they? Mm -hmm. All right, you ready to put them on? Yeah. So our plan is we're going to throw the outsides on first, and then we've got these big long through bolts that go through here with the spacer. You guys notice these are green. They actually come. I don't know if I said this earlier in the video. Um, the ones that we're going to try to modify actually come off one of these 850J dozers. You guys know you've been watching my channel 755k and the 850s are pretty much the same machine we thought we could just use these rock guards off these but it turned out the roller spacing was a little bit different so but that's where those green ones come from that you guys seen earlier so anyway it was all a good idea until it didn't work but is papa randy come to help we're gonna start throwing these dudes on here and Hopefully they all fit. All right, got that bolted on. We're gonna stick these long bolts through these holes right here. And then we got uh, some spacers on the uh, inside we gotta stick on. for the short ones and our long bolts. You tapped this one out, didn't you? Oh yeah. Look at all that. The good stuff. Lothra. The next guy is going to love us. Think this is necessary? Yes. I'll well, be silver by the end of this. <laughs> Look like the pin man. How about some paper towels too, Randy? Thank <laughs> you. 
You ready? You get silver on you. You're welcome. for you. Not my tail. Not my tail. You got that. Yep. Rub it in. Ugh. It's all over for me. <laughs> we can't put it in yet anyways. We gotta put the tubes on. Tubes? Bolts? What are you doing, spacers. Andy? We need our super long bolts there, Bubba. Yeah, what's we'll these three bolts on this for? Nothing me. Yeah. Take this impact and thread that bolt out about three quarters of an inch. Alright. So what we're doing here, we've got to uh, tighten these top ones up first, but we had to suck the rail together, so we're backing this one back up so Kevin can get a sock on there. That's good. Thread that back through, Randy. Alright. Alright. Let's have an impact back. Alright. It's tight. Ready, bub? Yeah. Okay. Well, if I didn't know no better. That come from Deer and Company. What do you think? Right. That one's got sufficient coatings. Textured finish. Hmm. Kind of looks like it comes straight from John Deere. Yeah. Looks good, looks good. I think that's going to do the job just fine. Yep. Customer's going to be happy. I'm happy that it took us, what, two or three days? Not no. Really. Mm -mm. It's looking good. Well, there she is, all bolted up. We didn't have to tweak a single hole or anything. We didn't do any prime lining up. Fit very well. I'm pleased with it. I hope the customer's pleased with it. 
What do you think? Oh, He's no. never going to know these aren't factory until he watches this video, right? That's right. So hopefully you guys liked this little quick video. If you did, do us a great big favor. Go down below, hit that thumbs up, that like button. It helps us out a lot. If you guys want to see more fabrication stuff like this, let us know in the comments. Let Tucker know how he did. You always got to let Kevin know how he paints so, <laughs> so his feelings don't get hurt. That's right. Anyway, appreciate everybody watching. And uh, if you want to see more cool stuff like this, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. We've got uh, plenty, plenty more cool stuff coming. So we've got a pretty, pretty epic build in the works. So make sure you stay tuned for that. We appreciate everybody watching. We'll catch you next time. All right, for the three or four people that's still watching, oh. we're going to do a little giveaway here. Uh -oh. So you guys know we got a new saw from Ellis Manufacturer and we love the thing. We've got the old Jet 8x12 geared head bandsaw still here yet. Mm. And it works, but it does not like GFI receptacles, does it? Mm. It works on a regular 124 volt or 120 volt outlet. GFI is at trips. I've never been happy with the saw. It's still a good saw, don't get me wrong. It's just not Ellis quality, right? That's right. Bro. So I'm going to give this away to some lucky viewer, but we got to get this video up to 200,000 views, right? So two months from the date this airs, if this video hits 200,000 views, I will turn around and give this to some lucky YouTube viewer. So all you got to do is comment in the description below the word saw. And uh, do they make those little emoji actions? Probably. The other thing you got to do if you want to win this thing, send an email to giveaway at ccsurplus.com. I'll put that right here down below. And all you got to do is just send an email to us and uh, write the word saw in there and your username on... Uh, YouTube. So when we pick some random person from the comments, we know who to contact. So, and if it don't hit 200,000 views in two months, I'll take it home. Oh, <laughs> we'll uh, do this whole thing over again in two months. So, okay. hopefully, we find a lucky winner. All right, we thank you guys for watching. <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, there's some nuts stuck in there. <laughs> <laughs>